Hey everybody, this is Dwight Peters from QuarterWaters.com, the site for social entrepreneurs. Where social entrepreneurs come on the program, they talk about the issues they're tackling, the impact they're making, and share helpful business tips along the way. If you're watching this program, it's because you want to change the world through the power of business. You came to the right spot. Now, on today's program, I have with us the founders of Aurig Audio, uh, Jason Lukash and Mike Simzak. And what Aurig Audio is, it's, it's a company where each purchase helps expand the use of music in at-need settings, such as Children's Hospital, where music can reach, teach, or hail. We're going to have these guys talk about the actual product, and uh, we're going to talk about the story. Fellas, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having us. No problem. I kind of stumble on the intro because I'm going back from one screen to another to another. But, uh, you know, for viewers that aren't familiar with your product, explain to them what that is. And introduce yourselves, which one's which, just so my viewers know who is who. I'm Jason. And this is Mike, Mike. Simzak. Great job in the pronunciation. Yeah, you can nailed his last name. That's uh, rare. Honestly, I normally butch your last name, so I got lucky with that one. <laughs> but I'm glad I did. But, fellas, uh, so, Mike, start us off. What so, is Aurig Audio? Aurig Audio is unique portable audio accessories that work on any device. We're uh, basically a niche speaker company. You can go out and buy any other speakers you want, but ours are creative and unique to each individual. Right. Yeah, how we, uh, how, we have, how we have the idea to come up with the company, we were both traveling for our, our old job all over the world, and we had an idea to make small, eco-friendly speakers that could come kind of fly and actually fold up like Aurig. So we developed these uh, eco-friendly speakers that are made out of 70% uh, post-consumer recycled material, and they come with that. Like that. And then when you're ready to listen to your music, you literally pop up, pull them together, and uh, you can listen to your music in an eco-friendly way. So we launched the company in August 2009. Actually, three months after we launched it, this is a perfect spot. This happened. Uh, the product was named the Time Magazine's Top 50 Best Mentions of the Year list and uh, kind of blew the company up in our face. And after that, we now have eight products and we're bringing out four a year. Um, and like Mike was saying, all of our products, we can make desktop speakers all day, but why be like everyone else? So yeah. we've done pretty well so now, far. That's that's awesome. And you guys have been able to crush it in what, just, just four years? Uh, before yeah. we even get into the story, because you guys have a really <laughs> fascinating story, and I really want to, um, I really want to capture all that. Let's talk a little bit about the impact you guys are making. You guys have been able to partner up with a few nonprofits. Uh, what? How do you guys gauge impact, and what brought about that? What brought about you? Uh, what brought it back? Like, what kind of impact do we do on what we're helping out, or for ourselves? Uh, for the for the nonprofits and what what impact were you guys looking to make for from a social standpoint? Yeah, the first nonprofit that we partnered up with was uh, Music National Service, which is um, a nonprofit out of uh, the Bay Area, California. And what they do is they are kind of like Teach for America, but they put music programs in schools that don't have music programs. So say it was a school in St. Louis, Missouri, right, and they had no music program in their high school. Well, music National Service, you go and you devote two years of your life and get sent to a location and build a music program up from the ground level in that school. So for us, obviously, we're in an makes sense for us to partner up with someone like that. But also, it's cool. That there is, there's not too many other charities like that out there right now. There's, I think when you try to find someone to partner up with in terms of a nonprofit, there's a lot that are very similar. They all, um, a lot of them fall in the same niche categories, but uh, Music National Service was different and it was unique and something that we're both extremely passionate awesome awesome i'm getting a little bit of breakup i think it's the wi-fi connection but we're going to keep it going so what brought about the original idea you know it's a cool little mechanism how did that come to life uh basically like how jason was saying we're traveling a lot and we wanted to have a portable of speakers that would flat pack and weigh like nothing. really love our music wherever we are so it really kind of came through that and Basically, had a lot of ideas drawn up and finally came up with this perfect design similar to the Chinese takeout box. You know, same kind of concept like that. We had a bunch of uh, prototypes made up and finally decided on going with this route. And it's been a snowball wild ride since then. What were some of the challenges that you guys faced in bringing this to life? 
You know, one of the hardest parts when you start a new company is how are you going to get your product out there? Luckily, we're both two marketing guys with extensive marketing background, so it's the same thing with no paid advertising or no paid marketing at all. Um, it's all been organic, word of mouth, you know, telling your friends, social movement. Um, that's really what's helped get the product off the ground as quickly as possible. And we rely very heavily on press um, so to help tell the story. Because it's a unique story and it's unique products. The best way for it to get out there is through either social media or just press as well. Um, so I think that's a struggle when you launch any business. How are you going to, you know, you've got an awesome idea, but how do you take that idea and take it to the next level? Um, pretty well, and we've got a little luck on our side too. Awesome, awesome. Now, you know, I, I did my research on what you guys did. You know, you guys been on Shark Tank. Everybody knows that. Uh, one of the things that you guys got a little bit of concern about was that you guys had a five-year exclusive deal with the Rocket device. Talk about that a little bit for, for entrepreneurs that are watching this program and they want to get something manufactured in China or overseas. What are some of the concerns that they should look for and and what should they look out for? How can they really go about it in a in a wise manner. Yeah, I think um, a, lot, a lot of people, when they have an idea, they don't know how to get it made, right? So ultimately, the majority of stuff is made in China. So you take your idea and you go to China and try to find one that you can trust and two that can make your product correctly. It's pretty hard to do. So what we did, uh, we had a relationship with an existing factory in China that was making our speakers and we had the idea to make the rocket, but we couldn't guarantee them that we would have X amount of business. So what we did was we had them take our idea and product to life and then we signed a five year exclusive deal saying that we're the only people that can sell this product for five years um, in the United States. Since then we've uh, gone through and actually uh, stopped that agreement because we came out with two other ideas that we patented ourselves. So we kind of uh, had the agreement in place but now we've gone a different route from that. So I think you know my advice to other people would probably be to try to file a patent for yourselves and if you can't do that that you can partner up with, but have a good lawyer uh, on your side to help you uh, negotiate a contractual deal that would allow you to have the exclusive right to sell and produce your product um, as well. Did you guys ever think that would get this big four years ago when you first came up with this idea? Like, what were some of the fears, man? Like, you know, I, I try not to I try not to do these interviews around the fluff. You know, like, I don't care for the fluff. Like, we, we know that you guys did it. You know, we know that you guys crushed it. But I really want to capture that feeling, that 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 beginning passion. You know, I, I want to get that that nervousness in the stomach. Like, holy crap. Like, we just used up all the cash that we had. Like, that's what I look for. Bring me back to that. Hey, we really went out on a limb with, on this. <laughs> I mean, quit our full-time jobs, um, really just risked it all, threw it all on the table, put it all on, you know, double zeros, and kind of uh, worked out for us. Um, the nerves were certainly there. I mean, all we did was eat, sleep, breathe, audio. And we, and, um, we, we had peanut butter and jelly every day for like a year straight. I mean, we were keeping all of our money back in the company. You know, the most important thing is when you're a small business, it's cash flows. We decided to pay ourselves nothing and then just live off the bare, bare minimum savings that we had so we could you know, have enough cash in the business so we could keep turning it around and buying more product and selling it to make profit. Um, but we were we were broke. We're still broke. You know, it's like people think you're going Shark Tank and you're like, oh, you're, you're rich and famous now. I mean, we're broke. Like, we're still eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because for us, it's more important to grow the company than to grow ourselves yeah. right now. You got to see the big picture. The big picture that the company is the only way it's going to grow. No, definitely. And that's what that's what I want to capture. You know, that's what I want to hear. Uh, bring us back, if you can, to a specific, like, Mike, a night when you woke up and you said, holy crap, I got to get a job. I can't do this anymore. Like, there has to have been times like that. And what what kept you guys oh, yeah. focused, kept you guys pushing? Just the light at the end of the tunnel that we knew that would, that would be there. But those uh, moments did happen. I mean, I got numerous job offers while working strictly on Oregadio. And had it turned down, you know, turn them down just because I've, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur at heart. I always knew I was going to go into business for myself. And I just wanted to keep going along that path because I saw the success that it could potentially be one day. Yeah, definitely, definitely. How important was it that you guys built this partnership? You know, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that are thinking, can I do it by myself? Do I need a co-founder? Do I need a partner? Can you guys speak on that a little bit? 
you're only as good as one person, you know, like, uh, I mean, both of us have two different roles, you know, uh, Mike is awesome at just like making things happen. I know I get anything done whenever it needs to be done. And, you know, I myself, I'm not good at just getting day to day stuff done. I'm more of like big picture trying to take this thing and like other ideas that we have, but, you know, finding someone else that you can tr truly trust and count on, it's, it's very hard to do, but lucky for me, I found this guy. And, uh, you know, it's together we're the dynamic duo. Yeah, it's a big trust issue as far as partnership goes, especially when you have like a unique idea, sharing it, you really want to keep it close to heart, but if you can have somebody you can trust, you're all the, all the more better. I mean, she's better than one. Awesome, definitely. Uh, so at what point throughout the launch did you guys say, you know what, this might work after all? I'm assuming it's being on the cover of Time Magazine, but was there a moment, <laughs> was that it? Was that the solidifying factor? <laughs> That was a pretty much a defining moment. Three months after we launched the company, like your name is Time Magazine, 50 Best Inventions of the Year list. And it's not like just electronics. It's like number one uh, invention that year was like a NASA rocket. So like to being on a list with like the a NASA rocket, like that's like, damn, like yeah. you made it. Like for two guys out of a garage. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. So that, that was like the moment. And then like going on Shark Tank uh, last year and then, having them film a recap on us this year, like, that's more like, you know, those are moments that you just look back and like, that was cool. Like, that was awesome. Like, I can't believe that happened. You know, one of those moments where you just have to pinch yourself and make sure you're not sleeping. No, definitely, man. Um, you, you guys just have such a compelling story, man. You know, the fact that b both of you guys have previous jobs, you traveled a lot, you guys found a manufacturing <laughs> center, you guys were able to bring it here. Um, what other advice would you guys share with entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs that, that want to make an impact in the world besides the other tips that you gave throughout this interview so far? I mean, my advice to like an entrepreneur or someone that has an idea, like the only way you're ever going to know if your idea is when is to try it. Like the definition of an entrepreneur is someone that has an idea and helps bring that idea to life. If you sit around just thinking of ideas all day and not make them happen, you're never going to so my advice is, if you have an idea, the only way you'll ever know if it works, try it. Like, that's the best way to figure out if you'll sink or if you'll, if you'll uh, swim. The other uh, thing I would add to that is never give up. You're going to hear no so many times. Yeah. You just have to jump over those hurdles and see the finish line and keep pursuing your dream on it. Because, I mean, we've been told no, obviously, more times than yes. But you still have to, you know, just keep persisting at it. Awesome. Guys, am I leaving anything out? Or Oregonaudio.com. There you go, no, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. You can find them at Oregonaudio.com. You can also find them at Roofs.com. Uh, fellas, it was great having you on the program, man. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Bye, Dwight.